Shaft say he's gonna be here, he should be here. Open it up. Shaft's his name. Shaft's his game. Can't say he's gonna be here. And he ain't. It ain't right. Tangle sooner or later. Why don't you stop playing with yourself, Willie? You ain't gonna do shit. Shaft's his name. Shaft's his game. Hey, man, I don't know no Ben Buford. 20. Oh, that Ben Buford. We're gonna take it out of your ass, Pip. <laughs> <laughs> for a nigga named John Shaft. Just found him. Wow. The mob wanted Harlem back. They got Shaft up to here. All I'm asking you is to let me know what's going on. No names, no places, just what? OK, Tom, use up your minutes. Get out. Don't tell me, man. Where the guy? Look here. than Bond, cooler than Bullet. Rated R. If you want to see Shaft, ask your mom. Welcome in, everybody, to another week of That Movie Show. Yes. Do we have to say podcast edition? Yeah, the podcast edition, because we have a radio show, Mike. We are legitimate people that do have a radio show where we actually talk about movies. More current event type things and we don't say the fuck word yeah we don't say the fuck word a bunch of fucking times right uh even though we did an article where i taught where harrison ford apparently was bullying richard dreyfus about fucking some girl on american graffiti and i couldn't like say half the interview <laughs> yeah of course well then it's harrison ford he's a surly really? old bitch i did a pretty good job of reading that shit live I've yeah you did gonna... Pat myself on the back. You should. Don't break your hand off, but keep doing it. Exactly. Uh, but today we are uh, we're taking a weird trip through time here because we're doing two generations of John Shaft. <laughs> yeah, one the original, the the other one. It's his nephew. Well, we'll get there because there's a whole bunch of business. I got to get the fuck out of the way first. Yeah. So let, let's just do that right off the bat. The original Shaft was released. On June 25th, 1971, had a budget of half a million dollars, came back in the box office with $13 million. And I do want to say, number 17 at the box office for 1971. Uh, yeah, it's also credited with being the like the first black exploitation film. Uh, second. I will, get there, I will get there in a second. Uh, but it is the move. It, it's one of three movies that MGM released that year that were actually profitable and helped them stay out of bankruptcy. Uh, <laughs> well, true, true story. Yeah, well, it didn't help because they're still in bankruptcy. I got a letter from them. Uh, yeah, so when they officially went under, they sent out a letter to everybody that was getting residual checks from MGM movies, and they were Good like, "Way to stop the residuals." Yeah, and they were like, "Hey, don't worry." 
we're still going to give you your residuals. Oh, well, that's nice of them. Yeah, so I still get a check for like 11 bucks every four months or three months. Four months. <laughs> every three months I get it. I get a check for 12 bucks because I said, we want ice cream in a movie. <laughs> Is that the uh, the what what what's women a, want or what's, what's the, worst, the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen. All right. Yeah. Uh, Shaft, directed by Gordon Parks. It stars Richard Roundtree, Moses Gunn, which is one of the greatest names ever. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of other people. Uh, it's it's most popularly starring the music of Isaac Hayes. Yes, he is the first uh, African American to win an Academy Award outside of an acting award. Uh, it's also uh, Isaac Hayes actually showed up to audition for the role of John Shaft. Oh, okay. Uh, and they they went with Richard Roundtree, but uh, Gordon Parks was just he, he was like, oh, do you want to like work on the music? So they started getting together, and there's actually a phenomenal documentary on the DVD, and it's it's all about you know shooting on location in New York. But the coolest parts for me were Gordon Parks and Isaac Hayes and his entire band in the studio, just kind of riffing and working out the theme song to shaft like the when they're shooting the documentary they hadn't figured it out yet and it's a little different than what ends up being on screen but he's like i kind of got this idea and just starts hitting the piano and all of a sudden the guy starts hitting the guitar and it's like holy shit this is happening like on this film it's happening live that's cool that's cool it was one of the coolest things to watch uh so we're doing not only the 1971 film shaft but also the 2000 film named Shaft. That one was released on June 16th in the year 2000. Had a budget of 46 God damn million. It. <laughs> had a budget of 46 million dollars. It made 107.2 million at the box office. So they actually made money off of it. Not enough to warrant another sequel for 19 years, but anyway, yeah. uh, it was. Let's see. Quite a bit of people wrote this one, uh, but it was also directed by the late, great John Singleton, who uh, passed away this past year, maybe? I believe so. I believe so as well. Um, stars everybody. Everybody. It's crazy just how many people are in this movie. Uh, Samuel Jackson, Vanessa Williams, Jeffrey Wright in an amazing role as people, yeah. which we will get to. Yeah. Uh, Kristen Bale, Dan Hedaya, Busta Rhymes, Tony Collette, Richard Roundtree reprising his role, making this a sequel, not a reboot. And OK, so now that that's out of the way. All right. Uh, we so we did of- this. We did this once before. Right. We did it with uh, Ocean's Eleven. We looked at both of them and it's being one. That was a remake. This is a sequel ish. Yeah. And so the thing that I would say about both of these movies, like the the difference between that compare and contrast and this compare and contrast Mm -hmm. is that both of these Shaft movies are very watchable. Very much so. Very, Um, very watchable. Whereas like I would not recommend the Rat Pack Ocean's Eleven. And uh, I feel part of it is the original Shaft's runtime. Yep. Uh, it's an hour 40. It's a, it's, it's a, it, I wouldn't call it a tight hour 40. No, it drags in parts, but, but it's okay. That, that was the era. Yeah, it's a 70s movie. It's a 70s, it's a, it's a black exploitation movie, as you mentioned. Uh, uh, it's actually the second, what they call, official black exploitation movie because uh, a few months earlier, uh, the movie Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song was released by Melvin Van Peebles. Okay. And which I, of course, own on Blu-ray. Of course um, you do. And that was kind of... It sits the, right next to Necromantic. Of course oh. it does. One of those is going to kill me. The other one is Sweet Sweetback's Badass <laughs> Song. <laughs> yes, it is. And that's kind of credited as being the catalyst, the, the godfather, if you will, of black exploitation. Um, and... Orig- and Melvin Van Peebles has said, now I can't back this up with any other interviews besides his, that Shaft was originally being written as a, a white movie. And okay. The, and the success of Sweetback basically made them change it. Now, I don't, again, I don't know. No, uh, but you can see it. Uh, you sure. can see it because it's a, uh, it's a movie. The first one's about like basically trying to stop a gang war. And so in New York, the Italian mob is trying to take over Harlem. And so it's like, yeah, if it's a white, you know, if it's two gangs or two mafias instead of a gang, yeah, you can see that. And yeah. It, it was it was originally I mean, I guess the original script was very just straightforward detective type of crime movie. And when when they this, if if what Melvin appeals is saying is true, when yeah. they decided to make it more black exploitation, they leaned more into uh, the man sticking right. to the man and all and, and, you know, all that stuff. 
you know, this is definitely one of those movies in the 71 version because the, the 2000 version is very different, okay. uh, you know, but the but 2000 very watchable. Right. Um, so the, the 71 version, it's yeah, it it's a very good movie that leans into these tropes and hit them all very well that I don't think a lot of other movies from the genre mm -hmm. necessarily hit. Well, it's also, I mean, the the genre, I guess, the the black exploitation genre, uh, and the exploitation genre in general was kind of it was. It, it, part of the charm was the low budgets that they right. had, but it was also a curse of almost like anyone can make a movie, right? And not everyone should make a movie, you know right? I mean? Exactly. You know, it was one of those things. So there there was a lot of throwing shit at the wall and seeing what stuck and sometimes you ended up with Shaft and sometimes you ended up with, you know, other stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, um, but stuff. yeah, it's also really funny because a guy that we had on this show uh, and a movie that we've done before uh, was so heavily influenced by this because I hadn't seen the 1971 version before uh, actually doing this show, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I love Black Dynamite. We talk about Black Dynamite all the time. And yep. Oh man, this movie is basically Black Dynamite. Like they oh, are gosh. they are very much one in the same. If you <laughs> liked Black Dynamite, you're gonna like 1971 Shaft yep. because it's actiony and campy and fun. Yep. Uh, you know, in the same ways that Black Dynamite is. Black Dynamite turns it up to an 11 and I would say that this is about at like an 8. Uh because and it's also be because of that because of course Black Dynamite was for lack of a better term spoofing these movies and shaft was supposed to be taken very serious oh yeah yeah that, that was the thing about the exploitation of the black exploitation movies is they're now in 2019 they're very campy movies but back then they were taken deadly serious oh yeah like this was Absolutely. a drama this wasn't like a comedy or oh look at that you can completely see the guy's ear falling you know a fake ear falling off or something like that it's no this was taken completely serious yeah um i just want to run down because I mentioned uh, Shaft was the 17th highest grossing picture of 1971. Uh, the top 10, uh, just to show you what he was, uh, what Shaft was going up against. Uh, number one was Billy Jack. Okay. I don't know if you've seen. No. Okay. Uh, number two, Fiddler on the Roof. Okay. Number three, Diamonds Are Forever, James Bond, uh, Sean Connery, Vegas. Number four, The French Connection. Oh, wow. I love that movie. Which most people are probably shocked that it's it's so low at that point. Yeah. Uh, summer of Summer of forty two was number five. Carnal Knowledge with Jack Nicholson and Ann Margaret was number six. Dirty Harry was number seven. Okay. Number eight was A Clockwork Orange. Oh wow. Number nine was The Last Picture Show, and number ten was Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Number eleven on the as far as top grossing movies for nineteen seventy one was Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. Okay. So that and and then you know it goes down and number seventeen was Shaft. So at the time, these movies not only I mean we we can look back at them as exploitation, but at the time they were making fucking money. Yeah, right. Of course. And as and, I mentioned, I mean it was one of three movies that MGM released that year that actually was profitable and kept the the studio out of bankruptcy. So yeah. this movie did something, and so much so that it actually it spawned a a, a couple sequels. Uh, it's let me see where are the sequels here. Okay, so. Uh, there was two sequels. The first one, 1972, a year later, Shaft's Big Score. Okay. And then the year after that, 1973, Shaft in Africa. That's insanity. Not only that, but also October of 1973, it premiered a Shaft TV series. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, which ran until February of 1974. So one season of the Shaft TV series starring, of course, Richard Roundtree. All right. Uh, well, you know, you'd hope that the Shaft TV show would make it a little bit better. And so then after that, we have the fourth sequel reboot. Correct. Sequel boot. Sequel boot. Is uh, with Shaft. Uh, with, um, with, uh, uh, wow, why Mace would Samuel do. Samuel motherfucking Jackson. <laughs> Samuel motherfucking Jackson. <laughs> like, wow, that was a blank. I couldn't remember his name. That's scary. I think I'm having a stroke, everybody. <laughs> um, and this, everybody that is in this movie, it's crazy how star-studded this is. Because obviously you have Samuel L. Jackson. Right. And then from there, 
it's just like, oh, I remember seeing it around 2002-ish. And then watching it again, it's like, oh, my God, everybody in this movie is somebody. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we, we, we talked off air. Uh, Lawrence Taylor, they were trying to make a thing out of him in the, in the 2000s. And they realized, well, he can only play Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. Which is why he was great in Any Given Sunday. And then he kind of plays himself in this. I don't know. I don't know his actual character's name. But yeah. Let me see if I can find it. Um, well, let me see. Where's Lawrence Taylor? He's got to be in here. No, he isn't, which is, I'm guessing, why he's Lawrence Taylor in it. Or, yeah, I think right. Is, I think, I, legitimately, I think he calls him LT in the bar. Yeah, he might. But uh, even, like, Mackay Pfeiffer was in it. He, he's right. The, he, Mackay Pfeiffer is basically the catalyst of the whole fucking movie. He is. He his, is. His, his murder is what sets this off. Um, right. And then, of course, there's... Uh, that great scene in the bar where um, they have Isaac Hayes, Gordon Parks, who was director of the original, and Richard Roundtree all in that bar with the whole big party scene and stuff. So right. Nice little cameos by them. And it's his nephew. Yeah. Okay. So let me, let's let's briefly touch on that. So in 2000s Shaft, right? He's referred to as his nephew. Now, in a little bit of research, because I still haven't seen the 2019 Shaft, which just came out uh, about a week or two ago. Yeah, I think it came out last week. There is a line of dialogue, apparently, that Samuel Jackson says to Richard Roundtree, basically fixing the muddy timeline where he says, you were a great father when you stopped pretending to be my uncle. Yeah, okay. So It's almost like, I don't know, like... Roundtree Shaft was like lying to Sam Jackson yeah. Shaft about being his dad because he wasn't his dad, but he was his uncle. Yet they seem very buddy buddy in the two thousand. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's just a way to fix it and be like John Shaft, John Shaft Junior, John Shaft the Third, or whatever the fuck. Because uh, right, because it's Jeff, better Jeff than is the is John is the third generation. Right, it's be- this movie is better if it's grandfather, father, son, it as opposed to uncle, uncle, father, son. Yeah. Um, so I guess they're trying to fix that timeline. Uh, last week uh, on the show, I was uh, trying to figure out who Jesse Usher was. Uh, he did a, a fantastic job. There was a show on Stars called Survivor's Remorse that was really funny. He played a pro basketball player actually from Boston. Uh, and it ran for, I think, three seasons on Stars that was just really, really well done, really funny. Um, but that was him. Okay. And... Yeah, I, I haven't seen the 2019 one, but the 2001, extru- I forgot how entertaining of a movie it was. Yeah, it was it was far more watchable than I remember because you hear Shaft, you immediately think black exploitation, and then you think about like, and maybe this is just me, but mm-hmm. I think it, the for some odd reason the connection to Shaquille O'Neal's Steel comes to <laughs> mind. I think. Um- the, cu- the 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 poster is very similar. You know what I mean. And the poster, so the font, the whole deal is very yeah. similar to. I, I I look. I'm looking at the poster right now, and I and I can see exactly what you're talking about. You know. And so you're looking at it, and it's just like, yeah, this movie's a joke, right? There's no way that this could be real. And then you watch it, and and it's good. It's also, I mean, just from face value, it's also Samuel Motherfucking Jackson right. doing Shaft. So by from so I'm judging a book by a cover, that's gonna get judged heavily because right. you know, they, okay, it's a goof, but it right. was, and and they got I mean like I said legitimate people like John Singleton directed it. it I mean there's a yeah you know these are heavy hitters in Hollywood, and I mean the the acting chops that we talked about Christian Bale in one of his early roles he might have just done uh, he American either Psycho. just did or was about to do American Psycho, um, and Jeffrey Wright amazing yeah jeffrey wright is awesome he's so good on westworld he's amazing on westworld and it's so and that was the biggest thing because he's that guy right Mm -hmm. he's that guy that you watch it in 2002 and it's just like yeah okay whatever you're just some guy and now you watch it and you're like yeah man you're crushing this and you go on to do great things he's a fantastic character actor very very much uh Along the the less comedic but but more dramatic side of what we were talking about with Vincent D'Onofrio last week with Men in Black, right? Just an amazing character actor that, that completely gets lost in the role, right? Yeah, right. He just blends into everything, and it was it's so good. He's so believable. Christian Bale is really good in this. He's great, you know. And it's just like wow, Christian Bale, like yeah. 
And this was like nobody knew who the fuck he was. I mean, like I said, it, like you said, it, he had either just done or was just about to do American Psycho, which that was like, OK, let's take notice of that guy. Right. Because prior to that, it was Tears of the Sun and Newsies. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like that's those Not are the notable. movies. Not notable. You know, those are that's what he's done. And I mean, so then. I mean, he was good in them. It's just yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't like, wow, that guy's a star. Yeah, it wasn't River Phoenix. <laughs> right. you, know, you know what I mean? It wasn't River Phoenix where it's just like, wow, this little boy. Holy shit. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to break this movie down? Uh, you know what? I went into it thinking originally that that one was going to be far superior to the other because I assumed that we were going to have a jokey of a joke, terrible movie of the black exploitation one. Right. And then Shaft was going to be terrible. The 2001 was going to be terrible mm-hmm. because they were going to try and take the schlock that was the first one and just uh, redo it. But serious this time. Right. And that's not what happened in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> uh, in any way, shape, or form. It's actually very hard to do a compare and contrast because and the uh, the main character's name is Shaft. Mm-hmm. That is where the similarities begin and end. Yep. The, the theme song is basically the same. Yep. And it, that's where that begins and ends. And other than that, these movies are so different. Uh, well, I mean, he, he's a ladies man as well oh you're right that's well the character the characters yeah he loves the ladies john shaft loves the ladies and and of course the the great trailer line it is my duty to please that booty yeah (laughs) that i'll I'll be honest upon rewatching that whole scene with um with sam jackson and i'm blanking on the actress's name but she played kima greggs on the wire Okay. Uh, she, she's the bartender in that in that scene where they're just going back and forth and she's like are you going to come home with me and he's like you just want to cuddle or you want the LD and I was like oh uh, creepy <laughs> it's a worse way to put that it, it would have been less creepy if he actually said long dick <laughs> it would have been it would have been less creepy if he said long dick just say long dick just say it the just LD. say long dick Oh God! Well, she, it's worse when you. Her response is, "I want the LD," and then cuddling, which was l- then followed up by, "It's my duty to please the booty," which of course makes every trailer. And it's like, why is this scene a thing? Because apparently they cut out. Uh, Christian Bale said in an interview said the reason he signed on for this movie was there was an awesome scene in the script of him and Sam Jackson having a knockdown dragout fight on an airport tarmac that they filmed. But it was cut out because uh, test audiences loved Jeffrey Wright as Peebles, so they wanted more of him. So they cut that out to make room for that. And I'm like, why couldn't they cut that last five seconds of bar scene and show the fight? I know. Uh, (laughs) You can put in the trailer. Marvel has proved you don't have to put everything in the movie that's in the trailer. Well, this was before. This was before Marvel. Oh, when they had to give everything away. They had to give everything away. Say, oh, here's a shock. Shaft fucks bitches. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. I know. Oh, man. That should have been the tagline. Uh, Jackson is Shaft. Shaft fucks bitches. Shaft fucks bitches. Yeah, I, yeah the whole thing. Um, yeah, okay. So let's go. Let's go to the 1971. All where, right. Um, I mean, I, 1971 is it's a very straightforward crime movie. Yeah, I do. I really like it. I like the premise. I think the premise is really good. He's getting. Um, wait, is this the one? Yeah, this is the one where he's uh, basically on trial, or he's got a manslaughter charge against him. Mm, uh, the, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yes, because he gets fired for punching Christian Bale in the other one. So. And he's like, he, well, Christian Bale is on trial for manslaughter. and He keeps skipping bail. Yeah, right. But in the 1971 version, he gets into a scuffle in his office and throws a guy out the window. Right. And so and so the cops basically like blackmail Shaft into like finding this mob boss's daughter. Oh, my God. It's such a nonsense. Oh, yeah. It's super nonsense, especially because by the time the third act rolls around, I don't think any of that matters. Like I don't, like I think we just forgot about that plot point. Uh, we did, 
Uh, I also, uh, there was something uh, that I completely forgot and how this movie, the 71 movie, it just ends. Oh, yeah. Like, there's no resolution. They just blow up a city block. With, and then like, it's over. With, with newspaper and gin. I, or yeah. Liquor they were trying. The whole building. Malt of, liquor. The whole whole <laughs> of explosive stuff whoo, was terrible. Oh, yeah. Because he's like, he's got a roll of what looks like newspaper. Yeah, he makes some, a Molotov cocktail. And some twine. And the guy's got a bottle. And he's like, that's not going to burn hot enough. And then he gives him another bottle. He's like, that's gin. Give me. And it's like, I'm like, what? Are you just in a. Because they weren't in a bar. Yeah, you just. What is this mixology that you're doing? <laughs> this guy, that's not even a proper cocktail. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, get somebody get Tom Cruise in here. So they cra- So he does the. the, the classic he crashes through the window which you know that's the classic shaft picture of him crashing through the window shooting people yeah shoots, of course shoots a bunch of motherfuckers basically he's he does die hard yeah and hits the street goes to a payphone calls uh the mob the cause the cop or, he calls a cop and uh it, it, it threw me because the cop had an italian name as well yeah but calls a cop and he basically just says like yeah i fucked him up and then starts laughing and walks down the street. And I'm like, oh, how's this? Oh, shit. Those are credits. <laughs> oh, cr- this is it. This movie, is it, man. Literally roll credits. Yeah. Um, the movie just yeah. fucking ends. There's no resolution. No, but it's okay because it's Shaft. Of course, because it's Shaft. And everybody loves Shaft. The ladies love Shaft. Yeah, the ladies love Shaft. Um, yeah, it's really good. Um, the other movie, the, the other one's a little bit better constructed. The Samuel L. Jackson one. It's a much better movie. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a much better movie, better constructed. Yeah. You know, you're looking at it, and the only thing that's really funny is, and I guess it, it it's... an actual plot to it. Right. It's designed because Christian Bale just confesses right away. Right away. Like, holy shit. He's just like, yeah, bopped him on the head. And then... Like Christian Bale is in this movie one of the greatest assholes ever. Yeah. Because not only is it like, okay, he goes out and bludgeons Mackay Pfeiffer outside a bar, but let's even back up even further. His like excessively drunken racist tirade yes. was excessively drunken and racist. Oh yeah. Like, it was so out of character for like a very, you know uppity upper crusty new york loungy type of it like the place didn't fit what was happening yeah right it, yeah it, it, you know it like and i get it they had to get to that point they had to get the racist part into it but it felt so forced in that part oh it did it really did it's like everyone's just kind of hanging out in this really hip uh, you know upper trendy scale. trend thank you that's what i was i was searching for trendy, trendy bar yeah. Trending Times Squarey type of New York City lounge with right. soft seating and and yep. really nice glasses for the cocktails and stuff. It was a very basically nice place. everybody in that bar is going to agree with Christian Bale. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the type of bar it is. And uh, yeah, uh, but it was like, and then all of a sudden, you know, Mackay Pfeiffer walks in, and I I wasn't counting heads, but I'm guessing he was in that scene the only black guy in the scene. Uh, just to yeah. make it really hammer home the point that hey, this is racist. Um, yeah, right. But, I mean, he was definitely dating a a, a, a white woman. Yeah. And they just they sit down at the table, and immediately, like Christian Bale just starts in on him. And yeah. It wasn't even subtle. No. Was not even a little bit. Like he's yelling across a restaurant, "Hey, they don't got no malt liquor here." Oh, I know. And I just. I'm like, this is it's also really funny because you can hear Christian Bale's accent start to like wane a little. Yeah. And the Welsh starts to come out a little bit. Right. <laughs> they don't got no malt liquor here. And uh um, like, oh so, man. So, okay, so it goes on, and uh this is all told in flashbacks uh from the 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 girlfriend's point of view and how Mackay Pfeiffer drops the you know the towel, the the Ku Klux Klan thing over the guy's head, over Christian Bale's head. Yeah, and everybody laughs. <laughs> Racism is fun. Yeah, and I don't know. Here's the thing: I don't know why Mackay Pfeiffer went outside. Did he smoke? I I, I missed that. I part. forget. He just, yeah, he just ended up outside. He went outside for because it was 2000, so he definitely wasn't like making a phone call. That yeah. wasn't happening. No uh, phone call, not happening. 
Well, maybe not, smoking maybe. a joint because ha 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 racism. Right, exactly. Um, so he went outside for some ungodly reason, and Christian Bale just comes up, pulls a you know post Pipe. off of one of a one of the the red velvet ropes. Which I mean, it's a again, it's a lounge with a red velvet rope, and he's screaming racism across the yeah. bar, and nobody gives a shit. I get it. His dad's powerful. Whatever. Yeah, not right. happening. Not happening. Yeah. Let's. I'm gonna nitpick the fuck out of this whole thing, because uh, the whole premise of this movie is nitpickable. Yeah. Um, yes. So, and he just bludgeons him. He knocks him the fuck out, as they yeah. say. And um, yeah, goes back inside, finishes his cocktail. Uh, Tony. He's Collette, covered in blood. Covered in blood. Uh, Tony Collette, who has the worst New York accent ever. I know. Um, is standing there. She's a bartender at the place and happens to witness the whole thing. So Christian Bale threatens her. He, he you know, has her take out her license, which, of course, he thumbprints with the blood that stays there literally the whole movie. Yeah. Um, even Two Sam years. Ja- even though Sam Jackson's putting it in and out of his pocket, not in, not in like a plastic baggie, just like actually holding on to it. And it's been two years. Two years. Completely. You know, that, that's that's plausible evidence. Uh, he threatens her. He's like, if you say anything, blah, 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 I'll fuck you up or whatever. I'll come to your house. I'll kill and- you. Uh, we find out he offered her hundred grand, fifty grand up front, whatever the fuck, and she took yeah, it. Yeah, hundred grand to leave. Yeah, something like that. Uh, fuck off. You didn't see shit. So, okay. So, the cops show up. Shaft first on the scene, mm-hmm. and uh, Christian Bale is sitting at the bar, and Tony Collette kind of gives the side eye. Hey, that motherfucker did it without actually saying anything or pointing him out. Right. So she eyeballs him. Sam Jackson goes over, and Christian Bale literally just confesses. Stood, like, yep, yep, I've you know I yep I did it I did. Yeah. It. So okay, they arrest him on assault at the moment, and right. as, they're, as they're loading Mackay Pfeiffer in, he starts like spasming and twitching and freaking out, which obviously is the indication he's about to die. But just to hammer home the point that Christian Bale is a racist. I know. He literally is sitting there in handcuffs about to be loaded into the car. And when Mackay Pfeiffer starts twitching, he (laughs) yells to Shaft, hey, homeboy's got rhythm, huh? I know. Really? I know. I don't care how rich and privileged you are. Yeah. You're not yelling that with handcuffs on across a New York City street. No, because you're going to be indicted for murder. Hmm. So uh, Sam Jackson uh, punches him in the mouth, and then they turn back. Sam Jackson's boss comes over, who is just another colossal idiot. Yeah, he just he just hates Shaft. Stereotypical, I'm the chief of police, you're going to get fired because I hate you because you get crime done and I like taking bribes and I... Yeah. Yeah, rabba, rabba, rabba. He's the man, as they say. Yeah, right. Uh, so Mackay Pfeiffer dies. Uh, Shaft's boss tells him he's going to get fired. Shaft turns around, knocks him again, Christian Bale. And, I mean, that was, that was kind of a good scene because he turns... Yeah. Around, uh, what for that okay cool i like it <laughs> cool. yeah well it's also cool uh, yeah it just sets up the movie differently and but of course in the most absurd way he just wanders down the middle of a new york city street in the middle of traffic like, yeah because he showed shift. up in a car yeah i know where'd your car <laughs> where are you going <laughs> right <laughs> right uh you yeah leave your car like you have a suspect who's in handcuffs in the back of your car where the fuck are you going <laughs> also doesn't your assault doesn't your arrest now not null and void or whatever i don't know well they, they actually they do they do reference that uh because when christian bale calls him from switzerland after jumping bail uh he calls shaft who is now off the force and in the, de- the private detective agency right something like that Maybe. Oh, no, he's been yeah. transferred. He's been transferred to narcotics because they don't oh, right. fire people because actually that that's a that's actually quite a, not what I'm thinking about it, quite a bit of realism in this movie. They don't actually fire cops. They just kind of move them around a little bit. So he yeah. got knocked off of, I, I'm guessing, homicide or whatever he was and moved to narcotics. OK, so new office, new phone number. Christian Bale calls him, says he's skiing in Switzerland right now. And the reason he got bail 
is was because, because Shaft punched him in the face. Right. Yeah, because otherwise he wouldn't have gotten bail. Which sure. is yeah, right. Of course, because he doesn't have a the absurd amount of money. But yeah, um, so now two years passes, and we're still. What's the inciting incident after the two years? Uh, well, he's working narcotics, and we get introduced to Peebles. Oh, that's right. Because they have that big chase scene uh, with the drug bust and stuff like that. And, yeah. And uh, Sam Jackson chases the guy very realistically through an apartment hallway where the guy jumps out one window and through another window. And then Shaft shows up. And then Shaft, he's just there because, you yeah. know, he's, he's, also, he's also Jason Voorhees. He's, he's, yeah, it's true. He's a Jedi. Um, and uh, so he's there. He arrests that guy, throws him in jail. And Peebles is up in his apartment watching the whole thing. And clearly he's the main baddie of this right, of the neighborhood. Whole. Yeah. So Shaft throws a basketball at him, fucks up his uh, 200 count thread, fucking whatever the fuck he says, Egyptian cotton shirt. Yeah. He comes down with his crew. Shaft has his crew of cops and other people. And that's now starting the beast. Right. right, right, right. And so now Shaft and Peebles. Yeah, Shaft and Peebles. They don't like it. Peebles is so good. He's a He's very underrated bad so guy. So friggin' good. He's so friggin' and Jeffrey Rush does such a friggin' great job at why am I saying friggin'? I'm so used to radio now. <laughs> <laughs> he is so fucking good. Yeah, uh, he, is, he is amazing as Peebles. Um, and just all all of his little interactions, like so we get Christian Bale back, um, and Shaft meets him at the airport, arrests him again. Guess what? He gets bail again. I know. Oh. This time he doesn't skip town. Uh, he finds out his dad, uh, who, while his dad's very influential, while his dad has a shitload of right. money, uh, they don't have a great relationship. No, and he hates that his he like hates that he gave his dad his dead mom's like you know, necklace. necklace. Yeah, yeah, which she's wearing around the house. I mean, she might have just picked it up or something. I don't, I don't, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mommy issues. That's that's what we're going with. And so he grabs the rest of his mom's jewelry, which can't go to his dad's new girlfriend, but he's going to hand it off to Peebles. Yeah, right. <laughs> Real sentimental. She, she can't have it, but he, I, he, can, he can sell it. He had it appraised for uh, 40 grand or some shit. Yeah. And uh, why? He, I don't even know why he needed the money or something. Like, I think it was just hiring protection, maybe. Maybe. Or trying to hire him to, to get rid of Shaft or something like that. Somehow these two worlds come together. Yeah, basically they both want to get rid of Shaft. Right. So Shaft sets him up and basically uh, mugs him. Yeah. Mugs Christian Bale so that he doesn't have the, the money. tools, the money. So now he goes back to Peoples, who has already started whatever process he was going to start. And he's like... This well, is the, sh the taking a shit yes. scene. And that's what I'm getting to. Because it's one of the greatest conversation scenes because of Jeffrey Wright just sitting there staring in his eyes talking down to him while yep. sitting and occasionally just going Ugh! and you hear the drop of a shit in the toilet. <laughs> I know. It's like how demeaning yeah. is, it, is it you're you're okay you're Christian Bale. You're you come from this influential family. And now yeah. you're sitting with a drug dealer who, you, again, you're a racist, so you believe these people are below you. Right. And not only that, but he's also a drug dealer, so he's even more below you. And he's sitting there basically telling you, you're going to work for him now. Yeah. He's taking a shit. And <laughs> at one point, Christian Bale does say, are you shitting me? Mm-hmm. Which, yes. Yes, he is. Well done. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> great, Rip great screenwriting. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, so basically the whole thing's coming to uh, to Christian Bale's going to, I don't know, he's going to try to sell drugs or something like that, but not really. Yeah. And, and then he gets rolled again. Yep. You know? And so now Peebles is going to shove a <laughs> shove a shank up his ass. Yep. Uh, people loves his uh, his ice picks. Yeah, he does. Uh, oh, that that's how they got together. Uh, so he, people's had an ice pick, so he arrested, so Shaft arrested him. Okay. Yeah. And put, and put him in. And he also, because, you know, Shaft knows how to fuck with the processing thing. Another, a lot of realism 
in in these <laughs> cop scenes. He knows how to fuck with the processing. So he's like, all right, when when the bus shows up to transport these guys, he's getting a broken seatbelt, meaning he's going to be stuck in the holding cell for a weekend until the next bus shows up. Yeah. Same thing with Christian Bale. When he picked him up at the airport, brought him right to the same holding cell. So the right. two of them start chit-chatting after a while. Right. I think, again, Peoples was shitting in that scene, too. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you're right. It's just a relationship. I would love to find out if that was like Jeffrey Wright being like, you know what? I'm gonna shit in this scene. (laughs) I really need to I really need to shit in this scene. That was like his character motivation, whether or not Peebles had to take a shit or not. (laughs) Oh so so we get uh the two of them together and but you know nothing nothing's happening correctly. For Christian Bale's character. No. And we also find out that uh, the two cops, the two narcotics officers, Dan Hedaya is one of them. And Dan Hedaya is one of those character actors that everyone would recognize, probably mostly as uh, Alicia Silverstone's dad in Clueless. Okay, yeah. That's Dan Hedaya. So him and his partner, who's also been in a bunch of stuff, uh, they're also on people's payroll. We find that out through uh, the actor who played Bubbles on The Wire, who's basically playing the same character in this fucking movie. He's, he's yeah. snitching for Shaft, and he's working for Peebles. It's basically Bubbles. Um, we also are introduced to Buster Rhymes, who is right. a, a gypsy cab driver that owes Shaft like a million favors, basically. Yeah. And Shaft is cashing in all of them. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're driving me everywhere. You're going to do everything. You're going to steal this, do that. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, we got to get shit done. And it's Busta Rhymes. So it's and it's Busta Rhymes. So we got to keep him in the movie. Yeah. Um, so it, it, and Vanessa Williams is also put in as like his, another cop. She's his partner ish. Yeah, kind of. Uh, she's one of the good cops. Yeah, because there's a bunch of bad cops. There's a lot of bad cops. Yeah. So she's one of the good cops. Uh, and we learn that because Dan Hedaya and his partner shoot her. Yep. Thinking she wasn't wearing a vest. Yeah, but she is. Of course she is. Of course she is. She's a good cop. Any, 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 any cop asks you, are you wearing a vest? You're going to say no just to check them. Yeah, right. But that's just like, why, why are you asking me that? We're supposed yeah. to wear vests. All of us are supposed to wear vests. Why are you checking me? I'm going to say no and see what the fuck you do. And when you shoot me in the chest, I'm going to know you're a dick. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> of course. Of because, course. you know, job security. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't know where we're going with this. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. Um, but yeah, so, so they finally tracked down Tony Collette. Who yeah. Has, uh, who has two giant Italian New York brothers um, that try to beat up Shaft and Busta Rhymes. One of them... One of them gets Shaft and him start fighting in the back seat of Buster Rhymes' car with Tony Collette, while the other one, Peebles stabs the fuck out of him oh, in the middle yeah. of the street. Oh and yeah. Like, the next scene, nobody gives a shit. No. Like Mikey, her other brother, who is dead in the street somewhere because Peebles ice picked the fuck out of him. Yeah, he did. They're just like they're in Buster Rhymes' apartment, which is where we get the this is some repugnant shit. Line. Yeah, yeah, because Samuel Jackson is just playing Jules. He just Jules. Yeah, with with you know less hair on the head, more on the face, and um, but the, they don't give a shit. Like right. there are two people who just watched their sibling get murdered. Yeah, and they don't really give a shit. No, movies people keep the yeah. plot going. Yeah, we gotta we, keep the plot going. We got we got ninety minutes. We gotta get this done. We don't have time to mourn Mikey. We'll do that in the possible sequel 19 years later. <laughs> uh, so we get back to uh, to court, I guess. Is that where we are? Yeah. All right, yeah. Cool. So we're back to court. And I mean, you know what's going to happen. Right. Christian Bale's going to get off because right. that's what people in that position do. Right. They, exactly. They get off. Like, there's no way that someone with, again, the influence, the power, the blah, 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 is going to actually get convicted of murder. So he doesn't. And as yeah. he's walking out the courthouse steps, uh, Mackay Pfeiffer's mom, who's popped in and out of the movie a couple times, so we, we know who she is, pulls a little Derringer and 
Yeah. Pops, uh, Pops Christian Bale. He's dead. Yeah, he is. There you go. Uh, and Shaft, who had quit on the... He quit on the second bail hearing. Yeah, he did. Where we got another one of those trailer moments where he threw the badge at the, the judge. Yeah. and just, uh, He didn't want to take it no more. Right. Yeah. Damn the man. Yeah, and, damn the man. Uh, save the empire. And... <laughs> So he, uh, so he basically he's standing on the courthouse steps. Uh, the cops are all there. He's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking done." And Richard Roundtree's there. He's like, "All right, well, let's go to work." Yeah, right. So, Shaft and nephew? Shaft, Shaft and Shaft, private eyes. <laughs> yeah, double Shaft. Shaft and Shaft PIs is what yeah. we're going to have here. And now it's uh, in 2019. Shaft and Shaft and Shaft. Shaft cubed. There is so much shaft being shoved yeah. up this mother. <laughs> the triple long shaft. I will say, God damn, that fucking Isaac Hayes music is amazing. It's so good. I mean, going back to the original, the 1971 version, I mean, how can you watch that opening sequence of shaft and not say that Sarah Fever completely ripped it off? Oh, of course they did. I mean, it's like, I'm, I'm watching, I was watching it the other night and I'm like, I had to actually Google when Saturday Night Fever came out because I'm like, all right, who ripped who off? Yeah, somebody ripped somebody off. And and the Saturday Night Fever people and the motherfucking Bee Gees ripped off Isaac Hayes and Shaft. Yeah, they did. Plain they really did. Saturday Night Fever was a, was a late 70s. Shaft was 71. They definitely did. It was, I mean, even just New York, the whole deal. The right. Of, oh, oh, and it was so cool. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, who... And then the Hebrew hammer ripped them off. Well, yeah, but that was direct. <laughs> I know. I just didn't Adam like the Gold- Hebrew hammer. Adam Goldberg was not fooling anybody. He was. Direct. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he, God. He, he reference shaft in it as well. Yeah, they did. They, yeah. they, they did. You just the whole, didn't like it. I didn't like the Hebrew hammer at all. I did. I like Hebrew hammer. Yeah, I know you did. Most of it. The first, yeah. the first 45 minutes is great. And then. Yeah. Yeah. So the question I now have, because I would, I think that that shafts. <laughs> That's shafts. Is that shafts? I guess. Yeah. I, you know. What are you expecting from the the new shaft movie? Same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's going to be cleaned up at all? Um. No. I mean, it's. it's let me pull it up here. It's. Uh, no, it's an R-rated movie. Uh, yeah. It's R-rated, two hours long. Uh, Sam Jackson, uh, Regina Hall is uh, basically playing uh, Little Shaft's mom, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, it, from the trailer anyway, it looks like uh, a third shaft is looking for the second shaft who is working with the first shaft. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Uh, honestly, it was one of those things that when I came out of the theater after seeing uh, The Dead Don't Die. Right. Uh, the theater door was open and I heard the shaft theme playing and I'm like, fuck, we should have gone to see that. Yeah. Because I don't care if it's a terrible movie. Right. It's better than the dead. Don't die. Oh, well, that movie's not good. Spoiler. That movie's not good. That movie's not good. I'm sorry. They tried really hard to do something really weird and they failed. Yeah. Fucking unfortunately miserably because I was really looking forward to that movie. Yeah, no, thank you. The trailer, and, and this is what everybody said when I when I posted the same thing online. Everybody's like, the trailer looked great. I'm like, yes, it did, and it got me to go see it. The trailer right. editors did a fantastic job with The Dead Don't Die. Right. The execution missed by a fucking mile. Yeah. The, I'm, look, I'm trying to look up what the current Rotten Tomato score of it is. Of The Dead Don't Die? No, of uh, Shaft. Yeah, what the heck? Can you dig it? Uh, it's got a, a 6.2 on IMDb. Right. With, uh, almost 2,000 people have rated it so far. Right. Uh, so let's see. Shaft 2019. Rotten Tomatoes. How are you not just quickly? 31. 31%. 31%. Okay. Out of yeah. 99 reviews. Uh, right. Audience score of 94. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the difference between the tomato meter and audience score because I don't pay attention. So the it. tomato meter, the tomato meter is talking about um, like newspaper reviews. So like they're, so, they're, so critics. yeah, so critics. So like technically, if that movie show was to start like ha- like if we had our own website with like r- actual reviews up. 
we could be affecting the tomato score as opposed to the audience score, which is what we currently are, where it's like, hey, we saw this and we liked it. Okay. Well, at, at least now that uh, Rotten Tomatoes has cleaned their fucking shit up, we now have verified ratings. Right. And the audience score is at 94 with almost 6,000 ratings as yeah. opposed to the tomato meter at 31% with 99 It's ratings. tough. It's tough because, like, there are people, and I don't know if this, this person has um, rated, like, went and rated it, but there was a... Uh, there's a person that's a critic that affects the tomato meter, and their thing is is that they are like ChristianFamilyMovies.com or something. So their entire lens of how they rate movies is based off of you know is it good for Christian children? Right. And so it's like I remember hilariously reading they reviewed Saw. And it's just like, or like, maybe it wasn't Saw, it might have been a different horror movie, but it was clearly not a movie intended for children at all. Mm -hmm. And they were like, they gave it a zero because they were like, yeah, this doesn't uphold any Christian values and it's not for children. And it's just like, well, then why did you rate the movie? We all knew that going into Bloodfest 7. <laughs> you know... It's too bad because if they had stuck around, Bloodfest Eight was actually very Christian. It was, it was, it was very, you know. It the was funny thing the is, of the Christ. The funny thing is, is that oh! they went in, they went into the Nun, and they were shocked. <laughs> I don't know how to rate this because it's horrible, but it's also very Catholic. It's very Catholic, <laughs> and Christianity wins out in the end. It's got a good Christian message. <laughs> Are following the rules. Yeah. Follow the rules. Um. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, that's the type of thing where it's like, there are people that are like, is this a good movie for children? And it's just like, yeah, don't review Shaft. It's not. Here's the thing. If, if, you're, if you're actually one of those people who are curious whether it's a good movie for children, it's rated R. Yeah, right. It's not. It's rated not. R and it's from Sam Jackson. You can expect at least 15 motherfuckers in there. Yeah, right. You want to see Samuel L. Jackson not say motherfucker, go see Captain Marvel. Yeah, exactly. Or Spider-Man. With yeah. Showcase, subscribe. Oh, wait, I don't have to do that in this one. You don't have to do that right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also the fact, I mean, Shaft, uh, it doesn't matter what Shaft you're, you're talking about. Uh, the first one, maybe, but the, definitely the, the 2000 and the 2019 version, they're not movies that critics like. Yeah. They're, they're fun. They're schlocky. They're, right. Like, they're Sam Jackson motherfucker movies. They're, they're not ones that would be like, well, this was an artistically. Important yeah, this is an important piece of cinema. The mise en scene scene when Peoples was taking a shit, yelling at Christian Bale. It's like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I mean, the AFI is not going to hold this in its you know permanent registry of important movies. Yeah, the right. First, the first one maybe seventy one. Yeah, seventy one. Yeah. yeah, probably. Uh, but but definitely yeah. 2019's Shaft, the next generation. No, probably not. No, probably not. But you know what? You might have fun for two hours. You're going to have fun. Like, you, you know, we're now in the summer months. It's almost July, 4th of July. This is the type of movie where if you got a like a projector and want to go watch a movie in the backyard, this would be a fun one to watch in the backyard with some beers. Absolutely. And and also and, and looking at like just the, the recent summer movies, it's also kind of the problem with this being a shaft movie and having the the shaft stigma or stereotype, right. if you will. Because like like I said, I went and saw The Dead Don't Die. I did not enjoy it. Right. Ev everyone I know, including yourself that have seen uh, Men in Black uh, new one, hasn't really enjoyed it. Right. I I bet we all would have had more fun at Shaft than the other two movies we've seen. Yeah. The, it's, yeah. It's not like, like, like you said, you're not going in looking for like high art or, or you no. know, a great fucking story. Like I said, I'm expecting it to be the same fucking story as the last two fucking movies. Yeah, right. Some shit happens, damn the man, and he's my kid. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, let's do this. Let's get some booty. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right. It's I a got a duty movie. to please that booty. Exactly. It's a fucking shaft movie. They're gonna look cool killing motherfuckers. You know? Right. Plain and fucking simple. So ultimately, uh, I think we're coming away with saying that you know both shafts so far, and I'm assuming the third one, are very watchable, entertaining yes. movies. Yeah. There you, go. you can enjoy an hour and a half to two hours of your life sitting down with a shaft movie. Yeah. The shafts. Go. 
All right, so coming up next week, uh, because Spider-Man Far From Home is coming out, uh, I put it to you over a text that you were going to yeah. be the one to pick which Spider-Man movie we were going to review next week. Liam, let them have it. Uh, you know what? I think that we should do uh, the second. This is the third second uh, Spider-Man movie, so let's do the original Spider-Man 2 with... Uh, with Doc Ock and Tobey Maguire. Hang, 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 hang on a second. Let me let me see. <laughs> uh oh, where are you? He's going off somewhere. I don't know. Who knows? He's running away. He's, he he got here. Oh, there it is. This that one. Yes, <laughs> Spider Man two point one. Yeah, I got. Let's see. I got the. Uh, that was one of the DVDs I actually brought down the cape. All right, so Spider Man. I have Spider Man two point one. What the fuck does that mean? So there's a little extra stuff. It's an all new two disc extended cut, includes oh, never before seen footage. Did Raimi direct this one? Yeah, yeah he, did. he did all three. All right, so was this the one with Macho Man? No, the Macho Man's in the first one. All right, so Bruce Campbell is a movie theater guy in this one, right? Correct, because he was the ring announcer in Macho Man's one. Yeah. All right. And so the interesting thing is, did you hear the, sh the stuff that uh, was going on with uh, this sp this version of Spider-Man? Uh, which which version now? So Marvel Comics tweeted out a very cryptic uh, four. And, and so everybody lost their mind when that came out because they started like fan booking and fantasizing and theorizing and all sorts of stuff. And what they thought it was Spider-Man boners. Yeah, they got Spidey boners. And what they thought it was was that they were going to do the unreleased fourth Sam Raimi movie in the form of a comic book. All right. Um, so, wait a minute. I explain that to me. Because when you say unreleased fourth Sam Raimi movie, are you implying that Sam Raimi filmed a fourth? He did not film. He did not film, but he wrote a, a fourth Spider-Man movie. Oh, okay. And so they didn't make it. They ended up rebooting it and go with Andrew Garfield. Right, right. And so that's what they decided to do instead. Right. And so what the fans thought was going to happen was that Spider-Man was going, the fourth one was going to be adapted into a comic book. And it was mm -hmm. going to be Tony McGuire's like version of Spider-Man in a four, in a uh, comic book. But instead it turned out to be JJ Abrams. It was a countdown, and, wasn't it? Yeah, it ended up being J.J. Abrams and his son are going to do a Spider-Man comic book. Oh, okay. So it's not a movie. No. Oh, okay. But but there you go. Cool beans. If you're into reading and shit, yeah. <laughs> it's right, got so, pictures. All right. Uh, I did just uh, so this morning I watched for the first time uh, Spider Verse, uh, Spider-Man into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Uh, Netflix uh, sneakily dropped it. Like, literally, I, I was looking for Lethal Weapon, and I hit the search button, and it was the first thing there. And I'm like, hey, oh. yeah. I didn't know if it was like a, like a, usually they put like trailers up, and it's like, oh, coming, you know, in a month. But it's like, no, they just, they just put Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse on they Netflix. Did. Didn't tell anybody. Uh, it was so much fun. It yeah. was so much fun. I'm, uh, I'm going to check it out in the next couple of days. And, and yeah, the, the, the voice acting in it is phenomenal. Um, a, I, I'm I'm a sucker for John Mulaney, so him as yeah. uh, as, as Spider Ham or or Spider Pork or Spider Pig or Spider whatever, Pig, whatever the fuck they're calling him, I Spider know. Ham. Basically, the, the the Looney Tunes version of Spider Man was just delightful. It yeah, was, of course. As, as you would say, the movie is delightful. It's delightful. I, I highly would suggest it now. Uh, so yeah, so next week we got Spider Man Two apparently. Yeah, Thanks, I'm excited. Liam. Yeah. Thanks, Liam. No problem. <laughs> And uh, so, by all means, please follow that movie show on all forms of social media at Mike Went, at Liam NAI. Hashtag that movie show where you can recommend stuff for us to review. You can also send me death VHS tapes, apparently, because that's the thing to do now. Awesome. And uh, yeah, right. you can also subscribe on every single podcast app. Type in that movie show, look for that movie show's logo, and you get all of our new episodes. Uh, and for the most part, the archives are on newageinsiders.com. Yep. We're going to try to get that updated uh, more yeah. soon. But yeah, uh, subscribe, to, subscribe to the uh, That Movie Show feed on your podcasting apps, and uh, we will... 
I don't know. I don't know. See you later. Facebook, YouTube, whatever the yeah. fuck. Yeah. All. all right. Cool, man. We'll talk to you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.